of Riff Relevant. My guests are Zach and Tom from Howling Giant. How's it going? Yeah. So, let's dive right into things. Uh, you all mentioned, and we know this is the last date of this tour run. How's the tour went? How have things been going? Man, it's been very smooth. I think kind of surprisingly so. Uh, we did a similar route. Um, last September. Last September, yeah. yeah. Okay. And it was, yeah, also very successful, but coming around again, being able to see a little bit of growth uh, already, it's been pretty awesome. Yeah, pretty pretty cool. good turnout. Yeah, yeah definitely. absolutely. Now, have you all been uh, having just local acts as far as opening, or has Vic Crown and Electric Fan have been with you all in a few days? They're just for this show, okay. yeah. It's, it's obviously just kind of different per city, and uh, we've had a couple other kind of touring acts we've crossed paths with okay. here and there, uh, but just for one show. Yeah. Um, but a lot of great locals. You know, totally. The past time. Yeah. I think that's what's been kind of really cool is going to each city and seeing, you know, a little bit different, you know, vibe from each one. Every yeah. band has been awesome, but mm -hmm. there's definitely a local scene that you can hear kind of come out mm -hmm. in every band we played with. So it's been very cool. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's always, like you say, good exposure as far as, you know, seeing what bands are in what areas and cities and stuff. Mm -hmm. like that. Well, and when you're on kind of that underground level too, a lot of it's just connection and being able to help each other out, Definitely. you know, yeah. uh, until you're, you know, we're not on a big national level yet. So being able to know that we have buddies in Asheville that we can kind of call on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, y'all are arena bound, man. Yeah, man, right, right, right. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, oh, Black Hole Space Wizard, part two, of mm -hmm. course, 2017. Great EP, great recording, by the way, all yeah, together. Yeah, great yeah. great songs and material, which I mentioned a minute ago, made my best albums of 2017 list. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. Uh, the reception to the EP seemed to be pretty good. It seemed to do good critically and everything, right? Yeah, yeah. man. Yeah. I think we're always, you know, happily surprised so far that yeah. people are just listening at all. You know, there's just so much content and there's so much good music out there that it always kind of feels good. Yeah. When anyone's listening to your stuff. Validating. Yeah. Huh? And it's nice to, you know, have people say, hey, good job. You know, so yeah. that's cool. Never, yeah. like, you know, expected, but always, you know, we're happy. Again. No doubt. Yeah. It could be worse. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, of course, and it's part two and part one now. I can't remember, is there a third part to the trilogy or will that be it? So, part three is real. We know that. Okay. Yeah. But as for a timeline, it's kind of uh, pretty loose right now. We've been okay. writing a whole lot uh, for the past little while. So, yeah. um, we have a bunch of songs that we really like that mm -hmm. just aren't <clears throat> part three material. Yeah, so we're, we're just constantly kind of writing music, and there is a lot that's in the Black Hole Space Wizard universe, so that will happen, but yeah, as you're writing stuff, some stuff is really fun, but just doesn't fit in that universe, so we're kind of just allocating, you know, what do we do with all these songs? Um, so part three will definitely happen. Totally. Yeah. yeah, we just have a couple different libraries of song ideas and all that. We're like, okay, where's all of this fit? Yeah. Now it's sift through a little yeah, bit. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Now is uh, I'm sure there's a sort of a conceptual theme that mm -hmm. runs through them in a in layman's terms. What would that theme be? Even though some of us could sort of have an inkling. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Mm -hmm. Man, I I feel like the best way to kind of approach Black Hole Space Wizard is to look at it like a kind of pulp fiction sort of thing. There's a universe that we're creating. But it's not necessarily like a chronological telling. It's not like one song is going to pick up immediately at the end of like what happened in the song previous. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Um, so it's almost best to look at it as scenes, kind of, from mm -hmm. a story that we're creating. So, in no specific time sequence. More yeah, or less. exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's to it's, some degree. Yeah. I mean, loosely. especially <laughs> yeah, it, like in part one. You know, you, we kind of mm -hmm. set the scene in a bunch of different. You know, you, there are only four songs on there. There's only so much ground you can cover in, in that sort of thing. Part two is definitely more of the journey of this character after this, you know, catastrophic event mm -hmm. in part one. Uh, you know, the pioneer, as yeah. we've dubbed him. And, you know, just kind of what he is going through on the husk planet of Earth. And stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, uh, as far as the songwriting and recording go, that's basically you two, right? Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I know, of course, you all pick up a third player as far as the live presentation go, but it's just you all basically in the studio mm -hmm. songwriting. Yeah. Okay. And when we recorded the other stuff, I mean, we were playing with our friend Roger Marks, was our bass player previously. Okay. He's amazing, really good friend of ours. 
Um, couldn't come on tour, unfortunately, and kind of decided to pursue his own career there. But um, as far as, yeah, the had, writing... Had a heavy hand in some of the earlier writing. Totally. Sure. And it's cool. We can still kind of reach out to him and, you know, get some opinion and advice here and there, which is cool. But for the most part, yeah, it's me and Zach sitting down. Um, and, yeah, just writing and coming up with all the concept, you know. Mm. Uh, what is the origin of Howling Giant? How did you all get together and originally start playing? Yeah, we, we went to school up in Boston, and uh, I was in another metal band, and Tom was in like a, a frog metal band, and, and uh, we started this this group. It's kind of a way to blow off steam, all these other projects that we were in. Got, yeah. Got pretty serious, you so know? So I, I think that was the issue, is that we had bands that wanted to be maybe more serious than was warranted. Yeah. <laughs> and they started crumbling. There was band drama. And I think me and Zach, respectively, in our own different bands, were kind of like sick of it a little bit. So we started this band called Skulldozer, and we wrote songs about our Dungeons and Dragons campaigns. <laughs> the first like song we ever nice. wrote is called Anthos the Minotaur. And it was just this like, you know, totally stupid song, but man, it was like, it was so fun to play. You know, yeah, it was yeah. just focused on the riff. It wasn't pretentious at all. Mm -hmm. There was no expectation of like, how do we grow the band or the brand? It was just about just having fun, just playing having fun. really yeah, loud yeah. and writing songs about like Dungeons mm -hmm. and Dragons being so. Yeah, yeah. We've been trying to kind of keep that spirit, you know. Yeah. We moved to Nashville and uh, decided to, I guess, rebrand as Howling okay. Giant. Um, also, because yeah. we spelled Skulldozer S K L D Z R, so <laughs> yeah. good luck finding that anywhere. It was just a stupid, you know, stupid. I can game. imagine. <laughs> I can imagine some of the. Uh, how do I want to put this nicely? Because I live in Appalachian, Kentucky, mm. I can imagine how some of the people try to pronounce that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, it was a cool band though. Man, the first show we ever played with that project was at the Elks Lodge in <laughs> uh, Cambridge, Cambridge, Massachusetts, oh, with yeah. a band called Knuckle Wagon, which is dude, I've heard that sounds crazy. Knuckle Wagon is punk. It's oh, amazing. Yeah, yeah. And actually, our our bass player who's on tour with us was playing guitar in that band. Um, check them out. It's some crazy shit. Oh, yeah. it? it was amazing, just about as gross as you could possibly imagine in this basement. <laughs> like, dude, it was it was a mess. But now, it was an amazing time. Now, are y'all originally from Boston, or no, no? We just went to school up there. Mm -hmm. I'm from Minnesota. Okay. Yeah. And my dad was in the army, so we just okay. bounced around a little bit of everywhere. Yeah. All right. Uh, of course, the, with the origins come influences. Yeah. Who would you cite as some of you both? Influences as far as Howling Giant and your own personal ones. Mm. Man, it's I almost feel like it's too hard to say just because there are so many eras of influence that I feel like happen as a musician. Uh, but lately, I guess what I've been listening to a lot of is like King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. Oh, They're yeah. awesome, you know. Yeah, just man. that I've always been a fan of that prog kind mm -hmm. of approach, you know. So like I was listening to Yes kind of early on, okay. and a lot of Rush. Um, but as far as like heavy, kind of doomier stuff, uh, you know, the standards, I guess Electric Wizard's always cool. Really and, nice. Yeah. yeah, man. I don't know. Black Sabbath, everyone should be listening to Black Sabbath. Yeah, always. man. Yeah. I catch a lot of flack because I'm a Dio fan. I always oh, joke yeah, around about how Sabbath didn't become a band until Dio took yeah. over. But <laughs> well, dude, that's man. not a very popular opinion with some people. <laughs> man, Dio was so talented, and to have the drive that he did, yeah. and that professionalism as a musician to be able to step in is such a valuable resource for a band to have, I think. Yeah, definitely. It's not all like partying and, and drugs and all that yeah. stuff. Like, <laughs> I like some people's. Man. In the previous lineup, yeah. like we'll go on this tour, man. We'll just go and we'll play a show, and it's like, dude, I just want to go to bed as soon as we're done. Yeah. It's not very exciting. It's not very sexy, but that's kind of like, you know, that's how you get it done. Well, take it from me. I'm probably got a few years, maybe, on you guys. Uh, that's the way it gets when you get older, man. It's not all, you know, all the life, all night long parties and excess and illicit substances and all that. Yeah. <laughs> so it happens. But what's uh, your influences, Zach, real quick? No, I mean, yeah, I always, I just listened to, like, my parents had me listen to a bunch of classic rock. You know, mm. that's how I kind of grew up. Yeah. And uh, my favorite band of all time is Coheed and Cambria. Really? Actually, yeah, kind of, in, I feel like, unexpected in this area. Not everybody's yeah. into that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, it's really good songwriting, though, man. And, like, 
a great kind of image and you know I guess direction for the band. So yeah, cool, man. yeah, very. You know, just the bands that do whatever they feel like, not trying to fit in a certain genre. Yeah. You know, talking about Rush, I listen to a whole lot of Rush. Mm -hmm. and stuff but that, like that that's really a key to a lot of it, as you all well know, is writing and creating for yourselves, you know, something that you enjoy and have fun, and if others like it, you know, so be it. I mean, that's a plus. Yeah. So, uh, got to ask you real quick, and I know this is probably a very cliche question, you all probably get asked this all the time, but as Nash villains <laughs> yeah. and such, how does Howling Giant go over in the country music capital of the world? <laughs> Nashville is... It's a kind of weird scene, you know. There, everybody sees the country for sure, but there's a little bit of everything. Yeah, there's sort of an underground. Yeah, thing. yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, you hop over to East Nashville, and you can catch all the indie rock you could ever want if yeah. you, if you want that. Uh, I mean, there's some great funk bands out there. I guess totally. the hip hop scene is kind of up and coming totally. as well. There's um, a great black metal scene too, though. Yeah, really. the sludge scene yeah. is real. I think for us, the places we're playing are not like touristy spots. So no one's gonna roll in thinking they're gonna hear country. You know? Yeah. We're no gonna one's gonna mistakenly totally yeah, 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 yeah. get exposed to a Halloween. We're gonna play show. Springwater Supper Club, and they don't <laughs> serve dinners. So you should know that. Go yeah. In. Yeah. But <laughs> it's amazing. Figure. But that's like the spot. And if you're going there, like you know, you probably know that we're playing that show, and it's gonna be just really loud and heavy and it's a good time I mean it's you know the heavy scene is there for sure and I think the people who know about it are going to show up and it always goes over really That's well good. So very tight knit community yeah it's not sure. as not as crazy big but like the people that are in go to pretty much everything I've yeah. been to a few shows that exit in man they always get yeah. a good turnout like Dax Riggs I saw Dax Riggs there and uh, Paul Bearer or Pilgrim or somebody, yeah, a couple I mean, different acts like that. Seems like Paul Bearer comes through quite a bit. I don't really know what their connection with Nashville is, but I feel like whenever they're in the area, it seems like they hit that spot, yes. which is great for me because I'm yeah I'm a huge Paul Bearer fan too for sure. So yeah, definitely. Uh, and of course on Nashville barbecue, everyone's got to ask you where the hell the good barbecue is in Nashville. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's hard to answer that. <laughs> Do you even like, like barbecue? <laughs> yeah, well, it, and I feel like the issue is that you'll have a good barbecue spot, and then people find out about it, and then it eventually becomes commercial and maybe loses some of the quality. You know, I don't want to call out some places, but like. Um, yeah, it's it's almost evolving. You go to one place and you gotta keep looking. Martin's barbecue is really nice. If you go, I would check out Martin's for sure. Uh, we were talking a little bit off camera about uh, Jad and Magnetic High Records and stuff, and I, you all sort of got were a late addition to this Pink Floyd tribute yeah. that's coming out. Mm -hmm. How did that come about? Jad just kind of hit us up and uh, and was like. We'd love to get you on a track, so they're doing, we're on the, the bonus disc, so they're redoing, they're doing the Redux of the Wall, mm -hmm. and uh, we're doing the kind of best of Pink Floyd mm -hmm. uh, bonus disc on there, and mm -hmm. they kind of gave us free reign a little bit, just like, hey, pick, pick a track, you know, what are you looking for, and, you know, we were just kind of listening around and, and landed on Matilda Mother, for Which sure. Which I've heard, and it's yeah, really yeah, good, we've, good. We've great been, interpretation. Dude, thank yeah. you so much, man. But we had, we had been listening to Matilda Mother, for a long time, it's weird, but in college we actually, uh, there was a class that I think we both took separately, but yeah. there was a, a music class called Analysis of Prog Rock. That and sounds interesting. Teacher, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> our teacher Ken Zambello like, loved that song. He loved to bring it up and kind of talk about some early influences of prog and, and you know, the value that Matilda Mother and specifically like Piper at the Gates of Dawn kind of brought to the table at the time. Um, and so we've been listening to that track, and it was so kind of weird and awesome, and yeah, definitely kind of has that like, not flower child, what's the vibe I'm looking for, but it's that like, you know, not light rock kind of vibe, but like really cool imagery. And it just seemed like it would be really fun to kind of take that and put make it a little on it. Yeah, yeah. And you yeah. all did, yeah. definitely, man. It's but a keep track. a lot of that melody, man, and all that like lyrical imagery was like really kind of in line, I think, with at least what I'm into, you know, when we're writing music, so it was kind of a no-brainer, and it might have seemed like a weird choice at first, but I think it was totally, easy for yeah. us to be like... Sort of an obscure one. Yeah, there might have been a little bit of, are you sure? <laughs> well, I, I think that was the first track that Pink Floyd 
ever recorded. Ever recorded. Yeah. Uh, it was the first track really? they recorded on their debut album, Piper of the Gates of Dawn. Yeah. So, uh, I might not know Pink Floyd history well enough to say for sure, but I believe that's the first track that they recorded. Well, that's so, interesting. It was kind of a fun fact, kind of cool to mm. pick that one. Good point. Yeah. And not to mention, of course, Sid Barrett's lunacy throughout. Totally some of this shit, man. <laughs> yeah, when we were looking at the original lyrics. I guess he wrote some, and uh, I think due to some uh, copyright uh, infringement on the children's novel that he was taking some of it from, he had to change the lyrics to what it eventually became. Uh, Dude, so you it can was find weird. the old lyrics, and they're like even they crazier. They're out there, wow. man. Yeah, cautionary tales for children was the book he was pulling out. That's wow. And it's yeah, it's it's funky, yeah. Dude, uh, it's cool, man. I think the idea of someone losing their mind is also just a really interesting <laughs> yeah. topic, especially in the Doom scene, you know what yeah. I mean? Which not to say we're an exclusively Doom band, but I love that aspect of mm-hmm. I think that genre of music. So Well in this age of everyone wants to quantify, label and tag and classify in your own words, what would you consider your musical styling being if man. if you can that's so hard. I, I almost, I hate, Trick question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we'll play like, we'll play crazy metal shows, and they'll say you're a rock band. Then we'll go play rock shows, and they'll call us metal. Yeah, yeah. Metal so band. Yeah, damn if you do, or damn yeah, exactly. if you don't. Yeah. We we kind of like being somewhere in the middle, though, and I think it's it's nice to not necessarily attach ourselves too hard to one specific subgenre because we like to kind of pull from everything. On our Facebook page, we just say we're rock. Yeah, you got to sort of get, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but you know, it's just because like one song, we might want to be like a full-on kind of doom, like new doom kind of approach, and another song, like we want to do more of a punk sort of vibe. Mm-hmm. And the minute you kind of attach yourself too much to one subgenre, you know, you'll get some backlash if you try to do anything that's not that. So mm-hmm. I'm always just really hesitant to say we're one thing. You know. We've had some interesting ones, just like a buddy, our buddy James, who was like, you guys are power doom. Power doom. Cool. It does get interesting, like some of the labels people come up with and stuff, man. But to me, you know, personally, that makes a lot of bands more interesting is whenever they draw water from so many wells, so to speak, you know, and mix it up, which you all do rather rather nicely. of course, we're at the last date of this tour and everything, but uh, three words, Psycho Las Vegas. Yeah. Uh, hey, how excited are yeah. you all for that? So excited to be in. I think we were pretty shocked to be invited to that. Man, <laughs> so honored and like, yeah, man, I'm just really excited to get out there and play. Yeah. Also, partially just so I can see everything. Yeah. yeah. Who are y'all looking forward to seeing yourselves? Man, I mean, I'm always excited to see, like, Paul Bear and Red Fang, really, for me, knowing okay. that they're on it. Kind of a um, curveball, though, with CKY. Uh, uh, yeah. I would, I'd love to check sure. that out. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. And, man, Danzig, like, yeah. How the Gods Kill yeah. in its entirety. Dude, man. that's insane, man. Yeah. 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 And then, like, you know, Dimu Borgir. That was a yeah. that I was a curveball. I think like Sun's deep. playing the pool stage, so I'm looking to forward to maybe just floating and taking it all. Yeah, yeah. 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 seriously, man. And like, I mean, we're always I'm, I've always been a fan of Elder, and recently been really listening to a lot of Toke. Okay, yeah. Uh, the from doing the North pool party on Thursday. Yeah, nice. yeah, man, dude, their album Orange has been really awesome. I feel yeah. like I just keep talking about it, but it's both. just yeah, those are both great. Yeah, yeah, man, really, really good stuff. Really strong, you know, live presence and really solid songwriting. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I've been really good. Uh, what's on the horizon? I know, of course, Psycho Las Vegas and everything. Uh, what lies ahead? We've touched on the EP Part Three. Yeah. And, uh, anything else on the horizon? Man, we we have a lot of writing to do for sure. Still, um, a couple different releases that I think we're hoping to do in 2019. We can talk more about those later, just because I don't want to say we're going to do one thing and then end up like, yeah, yeah, right. But um, but there's more, a lot more touring for sure. Okay. Yeah, definitely, we're, we're definitely trying to get out there a little bit more uh, these days. But I feel like we just have so much fun playing live and being able to connect with fans in that setting. Uh, is definitely a focus for us in 2019, and it's been, awesome. you know, a focus for 2018 as well. Mm-hmm. So, well, I know, like I said, I'm looking forward to seeing you all live for my first time here tonight. Yeah, and yeah. excited about that. And uh, winding down, I always like closing with just a open forum. Anything you all want to say, 
rant about, just share, state, whatever, it's all you. Oh, <laughs> You're on the spot. <laughs> uh, Dan, feeling really lucky to be here now and really grateful that we can chat with you guys. Seriously, it's been awesome. awesome. Just getting a response from fans and knowing that people are listening, I think it's really cool and not something you can always count on. And the food this mm -hmm. time around. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah we're we're not good. Yeah. <laughs> Last time was mostly fueled by Chef Boyardee. Kind of <laughs> yeah. May or may not have been heated up. This time we're yeah. like, eating right. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mike's been really guiding us, our, our touring bass player. Yeah. Is, uh, is vegan, so he's been keeping us healthy a little bit. Really? Uh, yeah, really? Not to say I didn't destroy a ton of wings when we were up in Buffalo. <laughs> you know. Uh, literally Buffalo wings. Oh, so. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, on that note, this is uh, Pat Wright Whitaker, Riff Relevant, my guest and great conversationalist, Tom and Zach from Howling Giant. Uh, get out and see them, chance you get. Go to Psycho Las Vegas, see them live there. Pick up Black Hole Space Wizard Part 1, Part 2, Part 3 is coming. And The Wall Redo, uh, bonus disc, Magnetic Eye Records, it's coming. Fellas, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We're out.